Tonight, in my opening statement, positivity amidst negativity. As a nation, we have many problems. The economy has taken a massive hit from COVID. We are yet to know how the true impact and what we may have to do in the future in order to curb the repercussions of the economy right now. And on the other hand, the government wants to keep pushing towards development and prosperity and deliver the promises it made to its people during the election campaign, which is way before COVID. So many challenges at hand. But if it's those challenges, the only thing we seem to be doing successfully is looking at our television screens and screaming at each and every one. For example, suppose you're a fan of the opposition. Well, in that case, you must be screaming at the government. And if you are a fan of the government, then towards the opposition. Because in our minds, we think the government is just a corporation that we've set up to work for us. And they need to do everything, each and everything in our lives. Everything, anything goes wrong in our lives. Government is responsible. You got COVID because you didn't wear a mask. Well, government is responsible, right? Just think for a moment. Let's take that whole theory and apply it to something easy to understand, like a family setting. See, we can call our father, the government, our mother, the opposition. Then we, the children, are the citizens of this nation. So right now, what's happening is that we, the children, are screaming at the father for not doing enough or the mother for not supporting us enough while forgetting that we as the children, we too have a massive role to play if we are to keep our family successful. In my opinion, since independence, we've tried all parties available to run this country, yet we keep facing the same problems time and time after. This time around, we thought we could bring in a leader from outside of politics and maybe he could change everything in a jiffy. However, we all now realize that it too is not enough because we changed the head and kept the infested, decomposing, decaying body. The only thing we've not done as much as a nation is to change how we, you and me, see the nation, see about this nation and feel about it. If we fail to feel good about our country, take charge and reverse this narrative, what hope can we have that the outside world would do the same? Well, I hope to discuss more on this with my guest tonight, a Sri Lankan entertainment icon who has been a tremendous brand ambassador for this country, Sri Lanka, since the start of this millennium, musician uh, Santosh Weerman. But before that, there's another sector that can help us to change the narrative of our nation around the world. Dani Duvithanamasam joins me right here in the studios to tell all about that. Good to see you, Dani Du. Um, for a change in the studios tonight. <laughs> um, what are you focusing uh, tonight about? You know, um, we've been saying, you know, all throughout, we have to change the narrative in terms of what Sri Lankans are thinking about themselves. Right now, tonight's uh, real story, what is your focus? So I think as you contextualize very well, the entire research series, we try to focus on what was behind the scenes, what was working towards getting this uh, the reset actual mindset forward. So tonight in this real story, given the guest and given the kind of background that we are coming in, we're going to focus on entertainment uh, solely and like really move on to how entertainment can change and affect the narrative of Sri Lanka in the real world. So over the course of civilization, the world has discovered various branches when it comes to entertainment. Sri Lanka has also enjoyed the fruits of having some unique and iconic creations that have cemented their place in various arts. But it is unclear how exactly these art forms have contributed towards further in the cause for Sri Lanka. Cinema, music and other art forms have been a cornerstone in Sri Lanka's identity. When assessing the journey of cinema, which began from the movie Rekaba, has made great strides in bringing together a number of talented artists from across the country. This has been witnessed in more modern movies such as Funny Boy and The Frozen Fire, which has made it to the global stage in terms of recognition. Quite recently, Sri Lanka has also begun its pitch to initiate the promotion of film tourism within Indian cinema as well. This was manifested in movies such as The Bridge on the River Kwai, which won the Best Picture Award in 1957. The movie was filmed in Kitulgala, Sri Lanka. The pitch to bring in film tourism has been coupled with recent wins in the international platform for domestic cinema as well. Okay, how do we take Sri Lanka to the world? Uh, it may sound simple, but it's very, very difficult. So we have to make a film that depicts Sri Lanka and take Sri Lanka to the world. And there's so many good 
fantastic, beautiful cultural stories in our 2,500 year old culture. I mean, we've had stars, we've got some huge names. Uh, uh, for example, uh, right now, Johanny is doing a great job. Uh, we've got, we had people like Bill Forbes, Sandra Edema, uh, Desmond Kelly. Uh, Sandra Edema was the first Sri Lankan ever to appear on top of the pops in England. But India, I mean, uh, why, why do we always stop at India? I mean, the, the world's a big place. So let us take our talent to the world. Uh, let us get on the charts in, in, in America, in, in, in Great Britain. Uh, I mean, if if if, the, if Great Britain and, and and Hollywood are recognized here uh, in in Sri Lanka as well as in India, then let's make some films and do some songs for the rest of the world. Sri Lanka's music industry has played an important role in building the uniqueness of our culture. This has varied and diversified in current status quo to include multiple arrays of modern musical trends. Johanny De Silva's recent feat, where she managed to win over the hearts of millions around the globe with her cover song Manike Mage Hite provides a good context as to the potential Sri Lankan music has for vertical penetration into different countries. The music video on YouTube has garnered over 169 million views, alongside the fact that Yuhani is Sri Lanka's most subscribed individual artist on the platform. I've auditioned close to 1,000 artists in my current role as the NR for Peta Effect. It's been amazing talent. I've seen so much of artists. But the, the sad reality is, the parents would always tell them, look, you need to find a job. This is not something you're going to make a living out of it. And when, when that happens, these, these people are not going to, uh, you know, evolve into people who would change uh, the country or, for, or, or the narrative for good. Uh, now, if you look at a country like India, uh, this, this country is so big. Uh, the, the hubs, entertainment hubs are like, uh, Kerala, that's what's out. Then you have boom, Mumbai. That's basically the Bollywood hub. People travel, like kids, 18 year old, they come and live in Bombay, like at smaller places. With that experience exposure, the product that comes out later is definitely going to be so much profound uh, with substance. I'm very confident our, our, we can, our artist has the uh, ability, talent, all of that to change the narrative for good for Sri Lanka. When we go out, it is our individual sportsmen, mm -hmm. individual corporate leaders, uh, b b you know, people like us, the entertainers, maybe the, the entrepreneurs, the creative people. They are going and fighting their own battles and doing it outside. But there is no consolidated strategy coming from, uh, coming from within as a state to put all these equations together. Now, if you take a country like Singapore, whatever, all, all these people, the sports, the, 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 the creative industry, maybe exports, all of these are, are, are part of this big macro picture. But we, we don't have a macro picture. So we are all fighting our own battles and, and we all have our own visions. So singular brands are really doing well. The foreign narrative has been saturated with extremely derogatory claims about the country's treatment of minorities from nations which have had some truly atrocious human rights abusers that have continued to modern times. In assessing a few examples, the treatment of the black community in the United States and other people of Asian descent, particularly the Chinese, provide a good understanding. This had expanded to the point where COVID-19 variants were blamed on certain countries of origin, creating communal unrest and distrust, which although was rectified, had severe consequences. When assessing creations such as Saving Private Ryan, an American sniper, the push Western media gives to portray its own people as the winners and the protagonists of historical conflicts, despite it not being the ultimate truth, have engraved and manipulated how most people view certain nations. The current government is also pushing the agenda to reignite the quality of the Made in Sri Lanka brand. A huge complementary factor to this effort would be the projection of its image in new lights through the entertainment industry. Now being in conversation about the recent mindset within Sri Lanka, entertainment coupled with the creative arts industry within the country contains a vast untapped potential. Mahesh, this entire subject, this entire series is something that you can actually touch on with the guest tonight given the fact that he has a huge background in entertainment. True, indeed. Uh, good stuff. Dhan Dhan Hassan, thank you very much uh, with the real story there. Let's take a short commercial break on the other side. Sri Lankan entertainment icon, musician Santosh Veerman. Right after this, you are watching Get Real. We are back.